Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Percy Jackson. Or should I say the world of Nico D'Angelo. As you may be aware, last week we got a digital re-release of Percy Jackson and the Sword of Hades, which is a short story that first appeared in the Demigod Diaries. And the big news is that included in this digital e-release, we got the first chapter of The Sun and the Star, the upcoming Nico D'Angelo and Will Solace novel. And we learned a few things about The Sun and the Star from this first look. The first thing that we learned is that this is not narrated in first person. It is narrated in a third person limited perspective, much like the Heroes of Olympus series. Now, this means likely a few things. The first is it is not just going to be from Nico's perspective. We are likely going to get at least Nico and Will's perspective, which is not news. We knew that from interviews from the authors. This also means we are being told this in real time as it's happening. Again, much like Heroes of Olympus. In each of the first person perspective series, which is every series except Heroes of Olympus, we, the audience, are being told the story after it's happened. Whereas in Heroes of Olympus and now likely The Sun and the Star, we are seeing it as it happens. There is no telling of the story. And yes, we're going to be following specific characters' points of views during this story, again, likely just Will and Nico's, just as we did in Heroes of Olympus, meaning it is a limited perspective. But again, we're just not being told the story, we are experiencing the story as it happens. Now, I will say Rick Riordan's strength comes from the first person perspective in his novels. Don't think I'm alone in saying that the first person perspective is written better by Rick Riordan. Now, I haven't read any of Marcus Shiro's novels, so I don't know their writing style and if this is a better writing style for them, but I will reserve judgment until I've actually read the full novel and not just the first chapter. And this novel is taking place right at the end of summer as everybody's leaving camp. When I say everybody, I do mean everybody has left camp, which is odd because in the other novels and the other series, we hear often about the year rounders at camp, those demigods who cannot go back home for one reason or another. But this time it is only Nico and Will left at camp at the end of the summer, which is intriguing because I don't think that the reason why the camp was always occupied was because of these big, vast dangers looming. There hasn't always been a big, bad danger immediately on the horizon. So it's intriguing to hear that there are no campers left at camp when summer ends. And I'm wondering if we'll get a little bit more information on why everybody's left in the novel, or if that's just going to be a mystery that we'll learn later. We also see that Nico is making friends, at least becoming friends with Will's siblings, Kayla and Austin. I don't know why that name just like left my brain, but it like left my brain <laughs> with Kayla and Austin. And Nico has finally seen Star Wars. Good for him. Um, we also learned that not only has he finally seen Star Wars, which, you know, his boyfriend is a huge fan of Star Wars, as we see in Trials of Apollo, he also would prefer to date Darth Vader over Kylo Ren, which is an interesting choice that I'm not sure I would have made. But we also see that Nico takes this kind of fun question that he's asked very seriously as if he's scared to offend the group that he is with. 
So I think it is a struggle for him to be close to people, which honestly makes sense. After everything he's gone through since the 1940s, that makes sense. But I do hope we get to see Nico come out of his shell a little bit more in this book from his perspective. And from Will's perspective. I would love to see Nico from Will's perspective, and I'm very excited that we will likely get to see that. Even though Nico has seen Star Wars, we also see that his pop culture knowledge is lacking, which again, makes sense. But I think this could be a fun kind of fish out of water theming that goes through the sun and the star, as if like there's a little bit of pop culture references that Nico just doesn't understand and either has to be explained to him or instead of it being explained to him, he just internalizes it wrong. I think that could be fun. And a likely needed source of humor throughout the novel. Now, the next really big thing that we learn besides what perspective this novel is being written in is that absolutely nobody has been told about the prophecy that Rachel Dare issued at the end of the Tower of Nero. Meaning, there are four people who know about this prophecy and only two, possibly three of them, know what the prophecy says. So the four people who know that this prophecy has been issued are Apollo, Nico, Will, and Rachel. Of those four people, we know that Apollo did not hear the prophecy and really didn't want to said to Nico and Will, this sounds like it's on you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go. You need me, call me, but I'm out. It is possible that Rachel has been told by Will and Nico what the words of the prophecy she issued are. Not sure, and I honestly think probably not. It is possible, but likely not. I think likely that there are two people who know what this prophecy says, and that is Will and Nico. And Nico justifies not telling anyone about the prophecy by stating it doesn't concern the well-being of camp. It really only concerns him and, by extension, Will. No one's coming for the demigods. There is no world-ending catastrophe on the horizon based on this prophecy. It is just about Nico and the voice that he has been hearing calling to him from Tartarus, which we haven't gotten a direct quote that it is Bob the Titan. The closest we've gotten is there was a Titan in Tartarus that Nico had to leave behind, which Nico didn't really leave him behind in Tartarus. That was Percy and Annabeth, which they do both feel very guilty about. But it seems that Nico felt, but it seems that Nico also feels this guilt as if it is his fault that Bob was stuck in Tartarus, at least from what we've seen in Trials of Apollo and at the beginning now of The Sun and the Star. And the last thing we learned, or really the first thing that we learned, is there's not going to be any fun chapter titles in this one. Again, similar to Heroes of Olympus, the chapter title is just chapter one. It's not called Nico One or anything of that nature like in Heroes of Olympus, just chapter one. And I will say I am a little disappointed that we're not getting the fun chapter titles. I really enjoy the chapter titles and I think that they are a fun little guessing game if you want to play that to what is going to happen within each chapter because they do tell you what's going to happen in each chapter, just not in the way you probably think that chapter title relates to the rest of the chapter. So I am a little bit disappointed in the lack of chapter titles. But what do you think? What do you think that we learned from this first look into the sun and the stars? Did you read the first look? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. 
And if you want to see more videos on the sun and the star and the greater Rick Brower in the universe, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because that is all we talk about here on Julia Goes. But until next time, stay safe out there, demigods.